ओके हाँ ऑल इंडिया काउंसिल टेक्निकल एजुकेशन ट्रेनिंग एंड लर्निंग अकेडमी अटल स्पॉन्सर्ड वन वीक फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम एफ डी पी माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रिकल माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल सिस्टम एम एम एस ट्वेंटी थर्ड टू ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ नवंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टूडे ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ नवंबर ऑन द थर्ड सेशन डॉक्टर सुधाकर उमाड़े सरदार पटेल कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग दे आर डिलीवरिंग दिस वेल्डिंग आस्पेक्ट इन एम एम एस डॉक्टर सुधाकर उमाड़े इज अट प्रोफेसर एंड वर्किंग एज हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट सरदार पटेल कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग अंधेरी he has more than 33 years of teaching experience he completed his b in mechanical engineering from amravati university and master of engineering from mumbai university in 1987 and 2001 respectively he has done his phd in low carbon equivalent ductile ir from vishveshwaraya national is in 2012 he has experience as lecturer in mechanical engineering from bharti vidyapeet college of engineering new mumbai from august 89 to december 1999 he also worked as a lecturer in mechanical engineering in government polytechnic pune during july 1988 to may 1989 he has received best technical paper award 2015 by indian institute of foundry man sai india guru award 2016 17 he has been a governing body of, member of sai india western region phd supervisor in mumbai university and have worked as a judge in different technical events in national and international level he has been a technical judge reviewer editorial board member and organizing committee member for national international conferences and journals of more than 38 such events he has published more than 49 research articles and conference papers he has delivered more than 25 expert lecture in fdp and star startup training programs and webinars we welcome you dr sudhakar umale sir to the one week faculty development program on micro electro mechanical systems sir will deliver the more, most important topic that is the welding aspects in mems dr sudhakar umale sir continue sir hello sir हाँ हाँ आई एम कंटिन्यूंग सर ओके सर सिट कम आउट ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन यस सर इतना ओके। 
so good afternoon all participants organizers coordinators and uh, my pg students who are working for this uh, dp so i i am delivering particularly very uh, typical topic that is on welding metallurgy a uh, title effect of heat input on mechanical properties of weld and heat affected zone am i audible sir C clearly yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so yes sir I, you are I, audible uh, uh, i'm you So it is the special topic on uh, metallurgy and welding. Uh, to understand this topic, uh, we require basic knowledge of heat transfer. Those uh, who are uh, teaching heat transfer, they can understand very well. Uh, fluid mechanics, uh, because we have the flow flow patterns in case of uh, welding. Material science, to understand the properties of materials. metallurgy so these uh, four topics we require to understand this topic called as effect of heat input on mechanical properties of weld and heat affected zone first you understand what is welding and what is the concept of it so i will give the little bit uh, informations of welding definitions welding is a process in which permanent joint is produced by heating the material up to suitable temperature uh, with or without application of filler material and pressure this is a very important definition it has again second definition a welding is a process in which uh, materials of the same fundamental type of uh, type or class are brought together and caused to join through formation of primary oblique secondary chemical bonds under the combined action of heat and pressure so this is a very important uh, uh how to form uh, the chemical bond uh, during if we get the correct chemical bond uh, we have a strong uh, welding uh, and welded joints so we understand what is chemical bond uh, uh, next uh, slides now as it is connected with a special topic called as weld uh, metallurgy because uh, we we have so many changes in the metals before welding and after welding you understand the changes in metallurgy microstructures mechanical properties heat contained in the metals heat contains in the welded pool like that so hence you must understand the metallurgy metallurgy is the science and technology of metals it is based on the concepts from physics chemistry and crystallography so generally metallurgy uh, forms from three we are learning physics we are learning chemistry uh, we are learning uh, crystallography in this uh, topic the metallurgy is the science that explores why metals behave the way they do so behaving of metal is very very important according to the behaving of materials uh, we are selecting the materials for a particular purpose this is very important and it explains what is the importance of metallurgy for selecting the material now this metallurgy explains the properties the properties uh, behavior and internal structure of metals these three are very important to understand the welding first what is the property of base material what is the property of electrodes what are the behavioral changes what are the internal structure like uh, right, internal structure means microstructure that is the called as pages it has if it is a uh, uh, ferrous materials it is uh, pyrites pearlites martensite like that now uh, for the improvement of metallurgy means for the improvement of welding portions uh, we require the special heat treatments uh, to get the strength of the materials and we require the different processes so that we can achieve the required material properties for specific applications now uh, what we really 
want we one really how to be familiar with different types of base materials and how they are affected by heating and cooling process in order to avoid a uh, weld defects so we are producing the joints without uh, any defects and hence a uh, uh, process of heating you must understand process of cooling we must understand and we will discuss here what are the different heating processes what are the cooling rates we are using during uh, cooling of welding pools now uh, a, a more complete understanding of metallurgical principles uh, such as the relationship between the metals properties we are keeping metals with metal properties and its Uh, chemical compositions every metal has its own chemical compositions functions of processes for weld uh, cold working alloying uh, heat treatment so you must understand uh, what is cold working what is alloying uh, what is heat treatment so otherwise this topic is very difficult to understand this will allow us to have more awareness about the process and materials and take appropriate decision further so a decision during welding is very very important whether what type of electrode we require what are the phase changes we will discuss one by one now you must understand uh, the major types of welding processes are gas welding arc welding solid state welding resistance welding thermit welding high energy beam welding etc we have so many types of weldings now uh, just you understand a uh, welding processes according to the subjects Uh, many subjects we involve uh, this welding process already i have uh, given a hint for this heat transfer analysis so the, uh, we are doing the heat transfer analysis during welding processes and because heat is transferred from one place to another let us say from the source of heat what is the source of heat we have to decide first how it is transferred to the metal how what is the cooling rate like that what is what is the solid solidification rate and hence uh, first you must understand what is the heat transfer subject which is a very core subject in the mechanical engineering without heat transfer a subject we cannot understand the welding process now uh, uh, during uh, uh, welding that is molten pool will flow from one place to another and uh, what is the rate of uh, that uh, molten metal flow we have to calculate and we are doing the calculations for welding process and hence we must understand the fluid mechanic subject so which require different dimensions numbers and as uh, you understand first uh, uh, fluid mechanics subjects now uh, uh, during uh, uh, welding during welding uh, we have di different types of traces uh, involvement so some traces are developed after welding and you must understand what are the traces and it can be uh, found out by material science and hence uh, this subject is very important material science you must understand what is material science and this analysis can be done a stress analysis i have not uh, done in this uh, uh, seminar but you must know what is a, a finite element analysis to calculate the stresses developed during welding and uh, uh, during uh, uh, welding uh, we have a lot of uh, distortions distortion is uh, undesirable conditions of the welding and hence you must know what is distortion and what are the levels of distortions because of that it is a particular particularly well defects and hence we must understand and how to calculate the distortion level and hence you must understand the first material science again so these these are the uh, third subject this is the third subject you must know now uh, you must understand the next subject that is a, a very important metallurgical analysis during welding process we are doing the metallurgical analysis means change in phases okay when molten metal converts into the solid it changes in different phases according to the uh, temperatures according to the chemical compositions and hence uh, you must understand this subject very well that is called as the metallurgy so uh, and again this is a course these are the fourth core subject in the mechanical engineering and uh, uh, before uh, starting of welding process any welding process you must know what is exactly welding design and uh, Uh, when you start any welding uh, uh, at any point and uh, it is very difficult to understand without any drawing without any uh, selection of materials electrodes plugs current like that and hence uh, to understand this uh, you must understand the very basic subject to uh, 
understand that is a welding process that is uh, uh, manufacturing science all five subjects and subjects are uh, we are teaching to the different different uh, uh, years to the students and hence we have the five subjects we will discuss all five subjects during our discussion uh, first you understand the welding uh, processes what are the applications of it so now uh, we are doing the advanced welding processes uh, where uh, a normal conventional uh, welding process uh, non conventional welding process that is called as advanced welding process so generally uh, welding process are used everywhere in the industries uh, starting from electronics computers laser fiber optics nuclear technologies electrifications automobiles radio and tv high performance materials buildings and many more applications i cannot list out here uh, we have so many applications uh, uh, of welding processes and you must understand what is exactly welding for different different applications otherwise if you don't know the applications we cannot have the a particular application how what is the pressure required for welding let us say electronics joining computer joining a nuclear technology we require electrifications we require a welding atom oil components we have to join for permanent joints and then so, uh, we have to face so many problems and what are the problems to be uh, considered i will discuss one by one now uh, uh, what are the critical technologies in manufacturing this is very important so always uh, mechanical engineering are facing a critical technology during manufacturing and hence uh, i have divided this critical technology in two groups that is called as the construction industries okay so you know what is the construction industries where we are using the uh, different different welding processes manufacturing industries we are using the different different uh, welding processes and hence uh, uh, we are uh, observing uh, welding defects now we are concentrating on the welding defects what are the welding defects available during welding and what are the causes why it offset what are the source of defects you have to find out and hence uh, it only if there is uh, having lot of damages lot of defects in the welding or uh, welding uh, joints and hence uh, uh, it will destroy the industry it will destroy the property also if you are using any welding processes in the houses in the uh, industry buildings and hence uh, during the joining of machines permanent joining and hence uh, these are destroying but what is the loss if the uh, welding defects are occur in the systems that is a loss of human life so uh, this is very important to prevent the loss of human life because of small uh, welding defects and how to avoid it so this is our aim uh, to find out the uh, uh, welding process clearly and hence it is necessary to understand welding methods understanding of welding method is very important uh, weld defects you must understand what are the weld defects heat generation during welding uh, we have to find out and different problems during welding processes these are very important now we are looking for that one two uh, three and four so when you solve the four problems when you understand these uh, we don't have any Uh, problems in future so we'll discuss one by one and uh, generally uh, as the title given by me that is a uh, heat a uh, heat input effects of heat put, input on mechanical properties on uh, weld welded portion and heat affected portions it is called as heat affected zone and these are the two uh, mechanisms we are following in the welding process that is a melting of melting of a uh, base metals or parent metals and after uh, getting a molten metal uh, then it is called as solidification that is called as a cooling rate so what is the cooling rate what is the solidification rate you have to concentrate first you understand what is melting of the metal then you understand what is the cooling of the metal first you understand solidification then it is introducing cooling rate so cooling rate depends on the heat transfer rate so you must understand what is the heat transfer rate from the surfaces and hence these are the two steps involved in the welding uh, which is associated with the flow of heat okay so flow of heat uh, which are depending on the rate of heat transfer in and around the uh, weld metal and hence what will happen 
uh, because of these uh, two melting and solidification we have the metallurgical structure of metal which is completely changed before welding we have a different metallurgical structure after welding uh, we have a different metallurgical structures and hence and hence strength of uh, that welded joint may be changed complete hardness may be changed means we have so many uh, even also some chemical uh, composition may also change and hence you have to find out what are the uh, effects of metallurgical changes in the weld metal as well as in the heat affected zone which is very close to the weld metal and hence uh, 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 you must understand why what why we are understanding this subject that is uh, uh, to understand what is the temperature okay at every point at every point we require the temperature when the tip nozzle tip or electrode is very close to the base metal what is the temperature when it is away from the temperature what is temperature what is the base metal temperature what is the heat affected zone temperature like that and you understand uh, without distortion without any problem uh, we have to select the uh, uh, proper uh, cooling rate and uh, hence uh, uh, it is depending on the particular locations of heat affected zone and the weld metal so we'll discuss uh, later on uh, what is the cooling rate it is depending on time heat transfer rate heat transfer rate is depending on the time when we have the graphs like we'll discuss different graphs uh, as time uh, as i get time i will explain it and everything this is a for a material this is for b materials this is for c materials so we are temperatures we are having temperatures we are interested in temperatures at a particular time for different different uh, materials and this is uh, very uh, difficult to understand and as we are, we must understand the basic equation of heat transfer and uh, uh, welder has a uh, 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 very good practice of selecting the cooling rate for different different materials we'll discuss later on on that uh, and hence uh, we will concentrating only on the heat flow we have so many mechanisms but we will concentrating on heat flow in welding for that uh, we have to understand so i have written here you must understand following changes during welding because of generation of heat so what is the change we observe during this phase transformation okay these are the different phases ferrite or light these will changes after all Uh, after welding, martensite may obtain, or any carbides may be obtain, or any uh, phase change. Now, hence phase change will totally observed before welding and after welding. And we have to concentrate a uh, change in resultant microstructure of the weld. And because of that uh, microstructure change in microstructures, uh, we have to find out what is the property change uh, before welding. and after welding and these are uh, now first uh, we have to discuss second resultant microstructure properties of the weld and that gives the strength of the weld a uh, uh, base metal weld metals like that and uh, what is the third reason so we have to discuss that is a uh, uh, residual stresses uh, this is a problem again suppose uh, there are so many stresses developed in the weld material and it is uh, getting problems and hence we have to find out you are able to find out what are the a uh, residual traces what are the distortions it is again undesirable this is a undesirable this is undesirable conditions of the weld materials and hence we have to find out we are trying to reduce a uh, residual traces by selecting correct melting process correct electrodes correct base metals correct temperature uh, and so on so uh, we'll discuss uh, one by one uh, how uh, we reduce the residual traces and distortions in the materials and hence uh, 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 what we are concentrating for reducing all these problems and hence uh, uh, this heat flow in the weld uh, it depending on different different uh, uh, factors so uh, heat source how the heat is generated what is the quantity of heat generation how the heat is uh, transfer uh, from one place to another okay so it depends on thermal conductivity thermal uh, diffusivity all mechanical properties of the Uh, material we require governing equations we are using generally for uh, 2d equation uh, as well as uh, we are using uh, 3d equations 
we'll discuss one by one uh, 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 2d equation 3d equations generally it is practice because this uh, uh, welding process is so complicated and uh, for, uh, finding uh, the governing equation that is a heat flow equation it is very difficult but particularly we have solved this equation in the heat transfer uh, because of conduction and hence uh, uh, let us say uh, we have a very uh, thin material we have a very thin material uh, during welding then what will happen uh, uh, we are selecting preferably we are selecting a two dimensional governing equation two dimensional governing equation because this is the depth this is the depth in here as the material is very thin we are considering uh, uh, 2d means x direction this is the x direction along the path of tra welding tra path and uh, this is x uh, this is the uh, uh, transverse path is called as perpendicular to x this is y and this is the z but z quantity we are uh, uh, negligible here z uh, direction is negligible because thickness is uh, 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 minimum and so uh, uh, how this uh, 3d governing equations we get uh, 3d governing equations we require when the uh, object is uh, base parent material material is very thick like this uh, then uh, uh, we are considering x direction this uh, this way y direction uh, this way and z direction like this and then uh, uh, we got uh, uh, three dimensional uh, basic equation and this uh, three dimensional and two dimensional basic equation can be obtained by uh, fourier equations for of conduction you learn this equation from the uh, heat transfer from third year mechanical engineering this is the core subject for mechanical engineering and uh, as uh, time uh, uh, give uh, permits me i will explain the governing equation for uh, 2d and uh, 3d also so we'll discuss uh, one by one uh, 2d and 3d uh, heat transfer in the metal Uh, heat transfer in the metal let us say uh, heat is generated at this point uh, heat is transferred uh, at a particular point so uh, it is transferred by conduction and then uh, you have to uh, calculate what is the heat transfer let us say this is at point one point this is at second point so uh, ultimately this is uh, having more temperature this is having less temperature and hence temperature is very important and hence heat transfer in the metal you must know what is the procedure to uh, calculate the heat transfer in the metal temperature directions uh, temperature directions so uh, let us say uh, this is a weld, uh, uh, molten pool uh, uh, it is also called as a weld pool and uh, at the center of it it is a maximum temperature temperature is reducing uh, here also temperature is reducing this direction this direction and hence uh, uh, now this is a uh, molten pool and this is a heat affected zone so you must understand what is the temperature direction what is the change in temperature directions so let us say in the y direction this is the temperature change direction this is in the x direction this is the change in temperature directions uh, in the z direction this is the change in temperature directions means temperature is lowering from higher tem higher uh, value to lower value and it ends up at a particular uh, point and hence you must understand what is the temperature direction in the metal so otherwise it is very difficult to find out uh, stresses developed in the metal and uh, uh, we have to select the direction of welding and heat flow so generally uh, direction of welding is taken like this suppose taken like this this is the direction of welding then uh, this is the direction this is the direction of welding direction of welding is very important which decides uh, uh, velocity of uh, welding or uh, speed of welding when i say it is a velocity i use uh, v for uh, showing velocity when i say speed of the weld it is i, I am using Uh, s as a symbol and uh, even also uh, cooling rate direction so this is a heat transfer q direction of heat flow so this is the direction of heat flow this is direction of heat flow in three directions we will discuss the temperature at any point in the weld metal you must be able you must be able to find out the any temperature any temperature uh, let us say uh, we find out uh, uh, let us say this is a uh, point this is a point welding electrode this is a welding electrode and uh, when you want to find out we will get the graph like this we will get the graph like this temperature graph uh, with the respect to the distance and uh, uh, we are interested in the maximum temperature and we are interested in the minimum temperature away from the electrode and hence uh, uh, 
to understand the stresses and to understand any problems to understand the cooling rate so you must uh, be able to calculate temperature at any point in the weld mill and uh, it is rate of heat transfer last is uh, rate of heat transfer q so uh, rate of heat transfer may be changed for different materials we will discuss one by one and uh, uh, we discussed now heat input what is the input input is given to the weld now if the heat is given to the weld therefore it is heat input and hence uh, our main aim is uh, uh, heat input uh, which is the primary influencing factor for microstructures okay as you change the heat input definitely microstructure will change definitely mechanical properties will change and we are interested in mechanical properties because we want a tensile stress we want a, uh, yield strength we want so many things hardness and hence uh, our interest is mechanical properties of a weld i am not talking about uh, base metal i am talking about the uh, weld materials so what are the mechanical properties of weld metal after welding so uh, which directly uh, depending on the available uh, weld structures and hence the heat input in welding process always is a great interest so uh, why it is uh, uh, to calculate exact heat input to the uh, system because it influences the weld uh, bead morphology what is the weld uh, weld bead morphology now let us say uh, this is our uh, uh, weld surface and uh, here uh, we are getting the uh, uh, pool like this it is a solidified pool it is called as a bead and uh, when you want to understand the mechanism of this bead formation so it is called as a weld bead morphology what is the morphology of uh, uh, bead formation what is the thickness of it what is the uh, uh, this length what is the height from the base metals what are the contents of the uh, bead uh, bead means weld metal okay what are the sort of the sizes of bed metals it depends on this uh, heat inputs and fusion zone so fusion zone is very connected to this and heat affected zone outside uh, it is called as a heat affected zone we have to discuss uh, three things bead morphology fusion uh, zone because in between that we have a, a fusion boundary so uh, fusion boundary is very important uh, concept uh, and hence uh, like uh, now you know the boundary conditions we are finding the boundary conditions for any change in uh, uh, transfer a thermal boundary layer conditions or velocity boundary layer conditions we require the boundary conditions similarly here we require the boundary conditions for the uh, fusion and hence it is called as a fusion boundary we will discuss uh, what is what are the fusion boundaries and hence uh, we are interested in microstructure of uh, these three we will discuss later on and i uh, and hence uh, what is the source of heat input what is the source of heat input that is the heat input can be referred to as the electrical energy supplied by the welding arc to the workpiece and hence indirectly what we want to discuss that is the electrical energy what uh, what is the amount of uh, current what is the amount of voltage and what time is required for conversion of this electrical energy into heat energy that we are interested okay so what is the melting point of the metal that is very important to calculate the electric current we require the melting point the melting point of metal is totally different for different different materials and what is the cooling rate after uh, forming the welding arc what is the welding arc you know well, welding arc is forming during the welding process what is the rate of uh, formation of welding arc we have to discuss and hence uh, if it, the heat input is very very proper automatically uh, we can have the correct electric current as well as correct electric voltage we'll discuss electric current amount and electric uh, voltage amount uh, uh, now and hence uh, we have to calculate what is the heat generation during welding so heat welding now the uh, let us say uh, this, this is a, a heat source let us say it may be uh, ac current or it may be uh, dc current and this is the source we are using to generate now it is giving to the electrode and uh, uh, here we have the uh, metal here we have the metals and hence uh, uh, now what let us say we want to remove this metal now it is volume volume of this metal and uh, we have to add uh, heat input to melt it okay it is called as a, a volume of the metal and what amount of uh, electric current and what amount of uh, 
voltage we require that is very important and hence we have to develop the equation for in mechanical way we are converting this electrical way to mechanical way and so and hence i am converting this equation as for the heat transfer heat generation during welding that is q and what is q q can be calculated by three two methods heat required to melt a, at a given volume this volume this volume is this volume so this volume can be melted Uh, can be melt according to this uh, 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 two way. Now this heat required to melt the solid. What is the uh, melting? So what is the re heat required to melt the solid and latent heat of fusion? So you know what is the latent heat of fusion? To get the latent heat of fusion, we have a different charge available in the market according to the material. So this is the formula. So in this way, I am able to calculate total heat required uh, to melt the metal. So it is equal to Q equal to rho. Rho is the density of the materials. Rho, because I am calculating on the volume basis, uh, kg per meter cube. Cp is the specific heat of material. This is the melting point of material. This is initial temperature of the materials, and this is the latent heat of fusion. This is this will obtain uh, by uh, by the charts from the charts. And then so we are interested. As you change the material, density will change, material at a melting point will change, Cp will change, and hence. For different different materials, we have the different different heat requirements for getting the weld pool. So these are the uh, zones available. We are interested here. Uh, now uh, uh, here we have the fusion zone. Here weld, actual welding done. Oh, over here uh, welding uh, weld pool is formed after fusion. It is called as fusion zone. So uh, this is the boundary. Uh, this is the boundary. Uh, uh, we uh, now this is a very hot surface after the uh, fusion zone this is again very hot surface it is called as heat affected zone in short it is called as haz h a z and this is a base metal which is unaffected by temperature okay and hence we have to study the complete structure of fusion zone uh, the boundary of this boundary we have to discuss this boundary we have to discuss and affected base uh, unaffected base material then uh, uh, you must understand uh, before selection of the welding uh, aspects what are the welding aspects for different different materials so basic physical properties of the metals are very important what are the physical uh, properties because basically uh, we are using the electric current and hence uh, electrical uh, resistance now you are using the electrode uh, we are using the electrode let us say this is electrode so we uh, what you, uh, electrode is doing now the uh, here in the electrode electrical energy is converted into the heat energy what why this heat energy is obtained because of the resistance of this electrode and hence electrical resistivity as this electrode has more resistance we are getting the more heat energy this is a simple way formula for that and hence uh, uh, we are getting this uh, heat energy from the uh, electrical energy and hence uh, uh, when we want any type of electrode which converts electrical energy into heat energy so we are selecting the electrode in such a way that it has high electrical resistivity property particularly uh, this is very important in case of uh, uh, gas metal arc welding gas metal arc welding here uh, melt is uh, uh, melting here electrode is melting and producing energy and uh, molten metal of this electrode falls uh, on the base metals a second is uh, having thermal conductivity which is the basic property of the metal thermal conductivity it is very useful now for the fourier equation it is equal to q equal to minus ka dt by dx in one dimensional equation so this is a very important for uh, uh, heat transfer uh, thermal conductivity ka dt by dx and hence it decides this thermal conductivity this thermal conductivity uh, decides generally what is the property of this thermal conductivity the thermal conductivity is not constant at a particular direction in all three direction thermal conductivity change because of the uh, uh, non isotropic materials okay we are selecting non isotropic material generally all materials are non isotropic because uh, phases contain like uh, uh, ferrite or uh, different phases we are having in the metals uh, it is in uh, not a equally distributed means material is not homogeneous uh, therefore Uh, we have a different different thermal conductivity in all three directions but if, when you observe uh, uh, materials when we are selecting pure materials it has the highest thermal conductivity 
and when you are adding some il, uh, alloying elements in that uh, the thermal conductivity will reduce and as you must understand let us say you have uh, very very pure materials and you are adding uh, silicon uh, in their uh, manganese then uh, chromium nickel copper and then automatically thermal conductivity of that uh, electrode will uh, reduce and hence uh, for uh, getting for transformation of this we are having the highest thermal conductivity of electrode okay so uh, basically thermal conductivity of electrode as well as thermal conductivity of base materials then uh, uh, this is the very very important uh, property that is the coefficient of thermal expansion so this is uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, may, may or may not be desirable okay uh, generally uh, if uh, you fix the two metals during jo joining let us say well, this is one material uh, this is second materials and uh, this is a weld portion now after cooling what will happen now, now the just you assume that this material is having very high coefficient of thermal expansion it will trying to expand because of uh, high, high, higher temperatures and uh, but this uh, uh, two metals are fixed during welding then what will happen so uh, this uh, material will uh, change its shape this direction so uh, this may be uh, converted like this so distortions distortion means uh, uh, not having same shapes or some cracks may be obtained and hence uh, the during selection of materials coefficient of thermal expansion is very very important property now what is the specific heat specific you know that what is the particularly it comes from the thermodynamics uh, when you learn uh, or when you teach this subject uh, now this is the basic property in thermodynamics it is a measure of ability of a body or a gas to absorb stored energy because uh, uh, this is a very very important so when you add the heat it should be stored in the body for some time up to the melting and as the specific heat will increase the melting rate will increase because already we have known that mcp delta t that is internal energy depending on this uh, 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 delta t uh, okay so delta t is generally constant m is constant then cp will change this cp uh, will decides the energy contained in the body now this ionization potential is a very very important for uh, uh, welding ionization what is the ionization so ionizations are formed during arcing you know weld, welding arc during production producing the welding arc so formation of welding arc let us say this is electrode uh, this is electrode uh, now this is uh, during starting during starting of the electrode uh, uh, electric electric arc will uh, generate now it is very difficult to generate the electric arc like this okay if uh, we are selecting the material in such a way that it produce initiates the maximum arc in short period so that material may be selected because it will take time otherwise proper arc will not generate we have the different different uh, size of the arc generation so it gives the stability uh, now this is let us say this is arc now it is the covering area for that arc some arcs are very short so this is the covering area this covering area that is the dimension from one end to another this is very important for uh, designing the uh, weld uh, and hence uh, this uh, arc potential is dip, uh, dip, uh, important for selecting the uh, materials a uh, metal oxides now the uh, this uh, arc is a very very high temperature having very very high temperature and like let us say this is a base material this is a base material it is a uh, uh, now it is in the uh, uh, melting it is a converting a solid into melt uh, and hence it as it is having high higher temperature now this uh, a uh, metal will combine with the atmospheric oxygen and forming the metal oxides and it is undesirable conditions on the surfaces of uh, this uh, sir, uh, weld metal or base metal uh, we have the uh, metal oxides and if the oxygen rate is very very high uh, then there is a problems in the welding and hence uh, we are getting the problems that is uh, uh, and definitely it this uh, welding having some defects or uh, because of that uh, because this metal oxide what is another uh, uh, problem with this metal oxides let us say this is a forming uh, a very very large uh, thickness of uh, uh, metal oxides now when the heat is come uh, it is uh, uh, absorbing from the electrode to the arc uh, from the arc to the surface it will not transfer to the inside and hence uh, it is uh, insulation for 
it is the insulation means the heat resistance will increase because of this uh, metal oxides and hence we are selecting uh, the uh, material in such a way that uh, uh, where there is a uh, less uh, metal oxide formations particularly when you select the aluminum uh, now the uh, aluminum has very sensitive to oxygen when uh, uh, aluminum melts it is combinedly very fastly combined with oxygen atmospheric oxygen and forming aluminum oxide al2o3 and this al2o3 is uh, uh, creating problems and heat resistance uh, is uh, increasing and hence it is undesirable uh, conditions of metal oxides now uh, this is very uh, because we are using the electric current and hence uh, mechanical engineer will think about what is the efficiency of uh, its uh, source efficiency so generally what is meant by heat source efficiency so now the uh, at the electrode at the electrode now this is a, a transformer we are using this uh, tra, uh, electric current uh, electric current i then uh, electric voltage let us say i am uh, using uh, e i am using e or sometimes i am also using v for voltage then uh, 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 v into i or e into i becomes voltage now is the wattage uh, now this wattage energy will come uh, when it comes to the uh, surface is come to the surface now this heat is not completely transferred to the base metal heat will not transfer to the completely and it has losses some heat will entered into the atmosphere and uh, we are interested what is the loss during transmission of this so this loss uh, is uh, uh, should must be calculated so generally uh, in case of uh, 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 this uh, uh, which current you using that is a ac current or dc current so generally uh, for uh, ac current uh, uh, we have a very less uh, uh, this uh, heat source efficiency or uh, in case of dc current we have a large uh, efficiency therefore uh, it is your choice how to uh, select ac current or dc current that depends on you so we are interested in q actual so q actual means uh, the heat uh, available at the base surface okay. heat available at the base surface that is the rate of heat transfer from the heat source to the workpiece we are interested in that otherwise because of this q actual the uh, we reach to the melting point of the metal and what is q nominal q nominal is the 100% energy giving by this transformer uh, to the uh, electrode and hence it is called as nominal power of heat source and this uh, welding time is very important how much uh, time for welding so it is depends on the efficiency and hence uh, q nominal uh, then means this uh, initial energy called as nominal a uh, heat is divided into two groups work uh, first is called as heat transfer to the workpiece now heat transfer to the workpiece that is the q actual and second is heat loss to the surroundings and it is having heat loss to the surrounding is uh, not useful for uh, welding purpose and hence uh, uh, we are trying to uh, give some uh, uh, preventions for giving heat to the surrounding so we will do uh, preventions so this is the formula a uh, mechanical way how to find out the heat source efficiency so uh, as the heat transfer way q actual by q nominal and this is just i multiplying q actual into uh, t weld that is the time of welding q nominal t, uh, t weld and hence uh, uh, during uh, in case of arc welding so uh, arc efficiency uh, we are calling this uh, heat source efficiency in case of arc welding called as arc efficiency so that, that is the production of arc and this arc efficiency of, uh, we are converting this formula into q actual here t weld and uh, here uh, ei into t weld and uh, this is the formula for uh, this is the total heat generation uh, this is the power by electric current that is the e is uh, electric voltage i is electric current just to find out like total this the current must be always constant therefore i have written here constant voltage constant uh, current so during arc welding this input is calculated like that during so per unit length we can calculate like that here uh, uh, when you calculate uh, like this the welding speed is uh, very important so what are the parameters responsible uh, for heat source efficiency because uh, we are reaching to the maximum but uh, we are not reaching we can reach up to the in case of dc voltage we can reach up to the 85% in case of dc voltage we can reach to the 50% and hence uh, these uh, parameters are very important how to select the uh, equipments uh, for this uh, 
the no, uh, torch nozzle diameter so generally uh, uh, in case of dc voltage uh, dc uh, current uh, uh, we are using the torch okay so this is the torch now this torch uh, is giving uh, uh, it has electrodes this torch and giving uh, torch to this uh, metal is uh, added and means uh, this diameter nozzle diameter is very responsible okay now welding speed and this welding piece so now this torch is now moving with some velocity so uh, it is a welding speed a material thickness a material thickness is very important as the uh, according to the material thickness uh, we have the selection of uh, we have the charts available in the markets as the thickness uh, changes the current and voltage will change and thermal conductivity of the workpiece that is it, now this is a, a high thermal conductivity material require lesser uh, heat input and higher uh, uh, lower thermal conductivity requires maximum heat inputs because it has lower because otherwise we get the uh, uh, the we are not getting the homogeneous molten pool so this uh, uh, we require now uh, after this efficiency after this efficiency heat source efficiency uh, next efficiency we require now uh, we have reached to the uh, base metal we have now this is the base metal so this base metal Uh, let us say uh, now the every uh, energy is available now you, uh, here uh, it is available up to the arc efficiency now here uh, we have the energy we have the energy here because of this energy and we are reaching to the melting point and then when we reach the melting point um, the base metal will melt base metal will melt this is the cross section so uh, what is exactly uh, welder now this welder is interested in ability of the heat source to melt the base metal okay as well as a pillar metal now both metals base metal as well as pillar metal must be uh, melt properly that is our aim and hence this efficiency is called as uh, melting efficiency uh, and melting efficiency it is written as it i m so now i have taken the transfer cross section of the weld let us say after welding so what is the contribution from metal uh, pillar metal what uh, material is uh, deposited what material is deposited here uh, this is very important so this is the area covered by this this is the outer surface area this outer outer, outer surface area is available for heat transfer now this is the called as a boundary this is called as a boundary boundary of the fusion weld now this is the called as a a fusion weld this is called as a fusion weld and as this is the area this is the surface area covered by the fusion it is called as ab base metal area surface area this is called as a pillar metal area this uh, two surfaces area are very important for uh, contribution of uh, melting and hence uh, uh, we will discuss what is the contribution of pillar melt uh, in case of uh, increasing melting efficiency what is the contribution of base metal for improving a melting efficiency now this is the formula this is the formula for uh, efficiency of melting uh, melting so uh, efficiency of melting depends on all these factors i have written here uh, ab ab is already we have discussed that is the area of base metal uh, v is the welding speed uh, t is the welding time the uh, welding speed uh, the welding time required for that hb hb is the energy required to raise unit volume of base metal that is a uh, Uh, heat energy which is required for metal uh, melting and this is another this is for related to the uh, filler metal this is area surface area for filler metal this is a uh, uh, welding speed time for weld this is the energy required for melting filler metal and hence this is the uh, now this is already already we have we are forming this is a uh, 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 efficiency heat source efficiency this is a heat source efficiency and e into i current current voltage and a time for weld and in this way uh, we are able to uh, calculate uh, uh, melting efficiency if uh, melting efficiency is very less particularly for uh, dc welding uh, it is uh, up to the maximum up to the 85% and it starts from uh, 50% okay uh, 50 to 80% and therefore uh, uh, dc welding uh, dc current may be selected Uh, to get the maximum efficiency for, and ac is having generally up to uh, 20% to 30 uh, 50% uh, ac current uh, like that so it may raise by uh, different conditions also 
so that that depends on the welder uh, how which uh, current may be selected for uh, getting this and hence uh, uh, what is the effect of this melting efficiency on uh, weld size uh, this uh, how to select now this is a shallower weld this is a shallower weld so when the uh, we have a very, uh, very lower melting efficiency just uh, uh, this thickness is uh, a fusion uh, weld or uh, weld pool the thickness is very very less and hence this this thickness may affects uh, uh, strength of the welded joint or any problems we have and hence just you observe that when we have a higher melting efficiency uh, when we have a higher melting efficiency now just you see the uh, uh, depth depth of penetration it is called generally a depth of penetration during the heating and this depth of penetration and after uh, uh, solidification uh, this is called a depth of fusion weld uh, this is very important how much depth of uh, uh, fusion uh, weld available uh, for strength of the joint so uh, generally we are selecting the very high melting efficiency to get the strength of materials and hence when you comments on these two figures i have given some comments melting efficiency is lower because of lower heat inputs oh so you have to select if by chance you are giving lower heat input and welding speed lower definitely uh, we are having the lower efficiency in second figure what is happening so we are uh, melting efficiency higher because of higher input and higher welding speed so what is the conclusions on these two comments it is concluded that melting efficiency cannot be increased indefinitely so we have to obtain uh, the correct melting efficiency it should not be more or it should not be otherwise uh, uh, metal will melt faster and uh, uh, we have as a pro we have to increase by chance the uh, welding speed we have to increase the welding speed and hence uh, as the heat input rate will increase definitely welding speed definitely we have to increase uh, therefore what is our conclusions the power input must be increased along with the welding speeds this is very important it should be also be noted that in presence of surface active uh, agent this is very important this is very important in case of steel in case of steel surface active agent it is called as surface active agent what if the you see as if steel contains sulfur by chance it is available what will happen what will happen if, if sulfur sulfur contains in this element so it is very uh, uh, active element for welding sulfur is very active element what is the activeness uh, the sulfur is showing uh, it increases the melting efficiency and uh, automatically uh, uh, we get the uh, formation of a deeper uh, weld like this depth is increasing depth is increasing uh, in case of non metals or any other metals we have uh, titanium oxides aluminum oxides or any other uh, materials we have we are using as a uh, um, surface active agent Uh, that uh, is uh, required uh, for metals as well as non metals and that Im improves the uh, weld pool so our uh, uh, aim is to increase the weld pool in such a way that uh, it must be uh, deeper uh, to get the uh, uh, weld pool deeper weld pool now uh, uh, when we want uh, some uh, uh, calculations we are doing the it is called as a uh, uh, analytical calculations we we are doing analytical calculations uh, for uh, uh, heat flow so already uh, when we are considering the heat directions uh, temperatures and many other parameters uh, we have the 2d two dimensional heat transfer equation three dimensional uh, heat transfer equations uh, uh, these are used by the principles of fourier equations okay two dimensional fourier equations three dimensional fourier equations and hence uh, uh, during uh, getting the Uh, heat or transferring the heat from the electrode to the uh, base metal we are assuming some uh, assumptions otherwise we are not getting the uh, correct equations it is very difficult to obtain the basic equations and hence we are assuming the uh, steady state heat flow uh, point heat source negligible heat fusion constant thermal properties no heat losses from the workpiece no convection in the weld pool so by assuming if uh, i know, i know that Uh, uh this is not possible okay uh, constant thermal properties if the material is heating uh, we don't have we don't say that uh, it is having constant thermal properties for thermal property will change uh, definitely uh, uh, heat heat uh, is leaving to the atmosphere from the workpiece uh, 
uh, no convection is there um, it is not only conduction but we are assuming that no convection in the whirlpool so uh, i am doing one uh, uh, i have done one uh, case study and uh, i will explain my case studies which is done one of the industries uh, for i have developed this case study for the uh, ship building materials uh, bigger ships are using uh, low alloy uh, uh, this so this is a very particular material this is very particular material uh, uh, high strength low alloy steel grades of structural steels so this is very very costly material which are used for generation of uh, or formation of uh, pressure vessels uh, naval vessels or compressors air compressors uh, it contains very low carbon percentage or uh, alloying elements are very very less and hence what is the advantage of it it has uh, uh, because a uh, carbon percentage what is this carbon carbon is generally carbon is called as a austenite stabilizer okay uh, carbon is called as when it is available very high carbon is available Uh, then uh, if that material is not suitable for welding and because why it is not suitable for welding because uh, carbon is uh, uh, called as uh, austenite uh, austenite stabilizer and hence uh, austenite is not suitable for our uh, weld metal it should be converted into the desirable microstructures and hence uh, uh, we are sele selecting very very costly material that is uh, high strength and low alloy uh, grades of structural steel uh, which is having the very very important property that is the weldability okay as uh, uh, we are using uh, uh, in, for uh, marine purpose and uh, this uh, uh, material is very suitable for weldability this is the weldability property so because of this carbon percentage and hence uh, i have used this material uh, uh, as a ship building materials i have done some experiments on it i want to say, show it and hence uh, uh, what i have done in the whole experimentation so i have uh, controlled the heat input i have controlled the heat input uh, during that period control how to control the heat input to control the cooling rates to control the microstructure to control the mechanical properties and then so we'll discuss one by one and hence uh, uh, what i uh, did in my experimentation change in microstructure directly affects the mechanical properties this is uh, i want to change uh, uh, microstructure this is my study and this microstructure of the uh, weld pool metals depends mostly on the important factors like heat input cooling rates and uh, weld metal chemical compositions during that period i have concentrated on weld uh, input uh, cooling rate and uh, chemical composition of the is and uh, optimal combination uh, combination of strength and toughness uh, of this weld metal could be obtained by the formation of acicular ferrite so what is this acicular ferrite microstructures so this is a ferrite it is a particular ferrite a uh, ferrite is uh, obtained at a very low carbon percentage and this ferrite is in the form of a needle structure no okay, this is a needle so this is needle structure and this ferrite is in form of a needle structure uh, whenever we get the uh, a needle st uh, ferrite structure in the in the uh, metal uh, then we get the highest strength and Uh, which is the desired microstructure and that is my objective to obtain the uh, shipping uh, welding and in, uh, now onwards i am having the basic uh, uh, moderate cooling rate this is my second aim how to obtain the moderate cooling rate during welding and this moderate cooling rate so what will happen uh, generally uh, we know that uh, ttt diagram so ttt during the ttt diagram uh, tem uh, time temperature and this uh, 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 transformations so uh, uh, there is a formation of perlite fine perlite coarse perlite uh, uh, benetic uh, uh, formations benetic uh, no it is uh, generally formed in the benetic structure is formed in the steels so uh, we let us say we have the very very faster cooling rate so uh, sometimes there is a formation of let us say uh, this is my cooling rate uh, this is a, a ttt diagram so uh, sometimes we are getting the fine structure now this is the cooling rate right like that so i am getting definitely perlite i do not want perlite so let us say i want uh, uh, this uh, uh, now what will happen uh, if it is a faster cooling rate definitely i i am getting the mart martensite structure i do not want martensite structure in the microstructure in the uh, base metal because the base uh, weld pool becomes so hard and uh, i cannot uh, do the machining later on and hence uh, i am trying to get the very very suitable material uh, which has higher ductility i want a 
very ductile material and uh, ductile material gives uh, because of uh, acicular uh, pyrite and uh, we will concentrate on these three and then uh, just i will explain the what is the microstructures so during this uh, uh, formation during this conversion from a uh, molten metal to the uh, I, i have not that uh, microstructure here uh, during formation of this what type of microstructures i get uh, one is that major uh, microstructure is acicular ferrite which is desirable uh, some uh, boundary ferrites i get boundary ferrite i get some uh, uh, side bound bond uh, side plate of ferrite i get some polygonal ferrite i get and uh, majority is uh, acicular ferrite in the weld regions and it depends on the cooling rates so this is the first conditions therefore balance of cooling rate is very very important so to get the correct uh, acicular ferrite uh, that depends on the heat inputs and uh, better cooling rate and how to transform this uh, weld uh, uh, materials up to the desirable microstructures i will have the study of this then value of welding current i will select uh, what is my welding current okay so i select the welding current uh, for uh, a particular i am using uh, uh, generally for this uh, uh, type of uh, uh, welded joint generally dc current is selected so welding current uh, this is i is selected so what is the i it increases the filling of uh, molten metal so this is the very very important as you increase the i uh, we will get the more strong the strongest uh, Uh, uh molten metal uh, more molten metal in the uh, uh, that uh, groove in the groove and then uh, uh, that is called as a weld nugget so let us say this is a groove uh, of uh, uh, weld metals i am having uh, more uh, uh, metal here i had more metal here because of this higher welding currents and uh, uh, what is the formation here that is called as a bead this for bead shape is very very uh, important and hence formation of bead is totally depends on the uh, voltage uh, welding voltage speed and welding current and hence uh, i have to control three things during welding welding voltage welding current welding speed and hence uh, uh, generally uh, what is the welding current i am selecting generally it is approximately 2.5 times greater than a weld penetrations or uh, uh, voltage and speed so generally we will select uh, uh, this Uh, just to uh, uh, observe that welding current and voltage uh, is the main welding parameters for my study okay welding uh, current and voltage are uh, parameters for my studies to get the correct heat inputs and now so i have st- selected i strength uh, low alloy structural steels as a base material is a very specific uh, and uh, i have selected a uh, uh, this copper uh, uh, alloy wire no i have selected a wire as a metal uh, for uh, uh, now it it will melt so copper coated it is uh, this uh, uh, iron metal is coating with uh, uh, copper now what is the this is a uh, very thin co- wire and what is the diameter of this wire this co- wire is having diameter 1.2 mm diameter used as the electric uh, uh, electrode now uh, we will discuss the f- what are the problems what are the advantages of this uh, Uh, electrode as uh, just you observe that a low hydrogen content type electrode filler material which uh, reduce the weld cracking so uh, let us say hydrogen if the uh, weld uh, metal consist of hydrogen by chance hydrogen is added hydrogen it is added in the weld material uh, we have the very very slow uh, cracking so this slow cracking is called as hydrogen cracking okay and hence uh, we are taking care of that so zero hydrogen is added into the system if some hydrogen is added definitely you are getting the slow crack it is not visible to the welding but definitely the uh, uh, there is a cracking that is called as hydrogen cracking and our aim is to reduce the hydrogen cracking uh, and uh, which reduces the strength of the uh, welded joint now what is the benefits of copper as a coating so this has uh, 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 benefits as it is a a uh, base metal electrode metal is a uh, ferrous metal and uh, uh, be- why copper is using because of this property we are increasing the uh, better thermal conductivity so that the heat can be transferred very fast and melting rate will increase and hence uh, 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 what are the advantages of copper for, and what are the advantages of high thermal conductivity so uh, i get the better arc 
as the formation arc no this is the arc this formation size of the arc is very important for this electrode hole and is uh, that is the first reason longer t uh, contact tip length contact tip length so this is the length contact tip length this is the dimension so i want this the addition of copper in the weld metal improves the resistance to atmospheric corrosion so we are forming the one layer on the surface and uh, this layer will uh, uh, create some atmosphere in such a way that atmospheric nitrogen atmospheric oxygen will not touch to the surfaces and uh, will not forming the oxides and hence uh, corrosion will not uh, observing during this uh, process and hence uh, what is my shielding gas no generally uh, shielding gas is necessary now what are the problems what are the problems is that uh, now let us uh, uh, you assume that problems are the uh, now let us uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, oxygen is adding uh, this oxygen addition in the weld metal is very dangerous nitrogen because air contains oxygen as well as nitrogen okay these three elements these three elements are very dangerous for weld metal what are they generally hydrogen is not available but it comes from the weld metals it comes from any other source uh, it comes from the fluxes also electrode has some fluxes uh, it comes from the fluxes or electrodes nitrogen is available in the air oxygen is available in the air therefore uh, shielding is essential a shielding of the arc is essential and uh, if the nitrogen is uh, available in the arc that creates the cracks oxygen is available that creates the cracks or uh, many other problems and hence uh, we are using this mixture we are using uh, this mixture as the shielding gas we are using shielding gas that is a protection for protection for the arc 80% argon and 20% as uh, co2 co2 is used because it is available very easily at if uh, argon is not available and hence uh, 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 particularly if you keep 100% argon no problem uh, but uh, uh, to make the economical conditions we are using 20% uh, co2 the production cost will reduce and uh, uh, generally uh, generally uh, this type of uh, electric current uh, because of this electric current what is the nature of temperature what is the nature of temperature 2500 to 2600 temperature will obtained by this arm just to imagine what is the temperature so this temperature is very essential and hence that amount of uh, arc should be generated now what is the disadvantage you during this process uh, if you are using uh, if you are using the uh, uh, maximum temperature more than 3000 degree centigrade by chance uh, uh, we get now what is the dissociation uh, uh, this co2 this co2 will uh, Uh, absorb the heat uh, from the arc and it is dissociating into the carbon monoxide and oxygen you take care of it if you uh, if uh, uh, you confirm that the uh, welding uh, temperature should not raise uh, beyond to 3000 degree centigrade if it is that, uh, that don't select the co2 as a shielding gas otherwise this shielding gas is creating problem in the weld metal uh, so this co2 sorry this co2 is uh, taking some energy absorbing some energy and it is dissociating into two uh, uh, elements components that is called as carbon monoxide if this generation of carbon monoxide it is uh, harmful for that welder so the welder is uh, very near to the welding procedure and uh, uh, it, it it creates the problems for welder as well as material this oxygen uh, creates the cracks and hence uh, it is very essential what is the materials so chemical reaction takes place a uh, chemical reaction takes place uh, for uh, why we require the chemical reaction you understand this i will take very fast uh, structural changes uh, uh, we have by chemical reaction so we have so many chemical reactions after heating by this is our aim chemical reaction after boiling joining with two similar and dissimilar metals our aim is to co obtain the good weld quality this uh, weld quality depends on a welding metallurgy that is our different different parameters Uh, selection of proper shielding medium i have selected it a uh, suitable welding process i have selected it so that uh, uh, it reduces the residual stress generations and distortion i am selecting always zero residual stresses zero this is zero then i will select only that uh, welding solidification mode what is my solidification mode because of this solidification mode uh, microstructure will change what is my microstructure for this i i i should i want exactly 
acicular uh, peri then it is my final microstructure which gives the maximum strength then uh, uh, we uh, that this uh, acicular ferrite will give the maximum mechanical strength this is the chemical uh, uh, reactions can be controlled by using proper shielding gas now generally what will happen what will happen uh, this base material we have selected is again unclean it contains some dust it contains some uh, oil uh, it contains some any other particles fluxes if it, let us say by chance uh, a base material has oil and this oil contains generally uh, diesel oil or any other oil lubricating oil so this oil oil contains the hydrocarbons now during, during welding this hydrocarbon uh, is uh, converted into hydrogen uh, and carbon separately carbon will burn uh, and this during hydrogen will evolve from this and it is entering into the welding materials and that gets the problem and hydrogen cracking uh, may be possible and sometimes what will happen in the electrode in the electrode has some uh, or in the flux or on the flux uh, or in the flux or in the on the surface of electrode we have some uh, um, uncleared material that gets the problems and hence uh, uh, a chemical reactions finally affects the weld metal compositions and mechanical properties and hence you select the uh, chemical composition in such way that it gives the proper welding and hence uh, we have two problems that is a gas metal reaction a second is the slag metal reactions so ga gas metal is shielding gas metal problem a uh, slag is available on the electrode we have the two proper reactions so i have selected i have selected what is the, this is a welding plate and now this is a direction of welding i have done this welding uh, for my work uh, now this is a uh, this is a voltage in case of dc current in case of dc current uh, uh, voltage is uh, a uh, very less this is a 22 is the voltage 230 is the electric current uh, that is the uh, now this uh, i just you uh, uh, just you observe that this is the bead formation for this very thin uh, uh, bead formations we have this is direction of welding when we select a uh, uh, 26 voltage and 20 uh, 260 uh, uh, current this just you for uh, observe that as you increasing the electric current the bead formation is uh, stronger the bead formation is stronger now this is the voltage uh, 28 this is the welding current 280 just you for observe that this is the electric uh, uh, now this is the formation of bead thickness so uh, uh, now you have to select you have to select the uh, current and the voltage in such a way that you that bead formation must be suitable to you to get the strength of the weld now this is the i will take fair faster now it is uh, uh electrode selections i have selected this now this is the machine automatic machines we are uh, selecting so this is a very very new advanced technology we are not doing manually we are doing with machines so uh, what is the provision in the machines we have the speed uh, 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 we have the advantages of speed selection generally uh, uh, we are selecting uh, uh, speed uh, for uh, this operation as uh, 650 600 to uh, 650 uh, Uh, mm per minute so this uh, i will i select the uh, speed uh, here uh, now i will i will give the command to this uh, 600 to 650 mm per minute for this operation this, generally this is the suitable uh, welding speed uh, now uh, automatically machine will take the speed now this is the welding torch this welding torch is very very uh, important according to the welding speed welding torch will move so uh, this is one of the parameter how to select the welding torch So that gives the uh, materials. Now we get the. Now this is a complete is the frame. This is the complete is the frame. Frame is moving with this. And these are the cylinding, uh, cylinding gas cylinders. According to the need, argon is there or CO2 is there. According to that, we need a different different cylinding uh, uh, gas cylinders. Now my major thing is that how to select the base metal or parent metal uh, compositions. Already I have given that uh, this uh, material. This was selected. this uh, marine material is having very very low carbon material just to observe that when you select the iron carbon diagram where uh, you are the mechanical engineer uh, now this is iron carbon diagram temperature versus carbon percentage here so here in this range uh, we will get uh, uh, this range 0.08 to 0.2 now this is a uh, uh, ectoid uh, uh, here we are getting the pearlitic structure here we are getting the completely ferrite and when we have the ferrite in the normal at atmospheric uh, uh, temperature Uh, that is room temperature 
uh, that is uh, completely ferrite and hence we are getting the duct ductility property uh, just to observe that every alloying elements having very very less compositions and that is very uh, desirable conditions for the marine operations this is the conditions for welding wire so you have to select the chemical composition for welding wire just you observe that a uh, welding wire is also, also the very very low carbon because carbon is having many many uh, uh, difficult as you increase the carbon percentage it is of uh, carbon is called as uh, austenite stabilizer nitrogen is also called as uh, austenite stabilizer uh, now this is the welding procedure you have to select the uh, uh, base metal size uh, i have done this experiment uh, in naval metal research uh, anm rl amarnath thani so uh, i have selected electric current voltage and welding speed that uh, three parameters are very important to get the uh, correct welding procedure these are the micro structures i have selected uh, uh, some uh, uh, heat input okay uh, this is uh, by selecting i have taken three trial there i have this is trial one i have taken three current three voltage and three welding speed uh, during that period this is my heat input 1.13 up to 1.24 kJ per mm and during that period uh, this is uh, my uh, volume fraction of acyclic means acyclic ferrite and this is the magnification of microstructures 200 uh, micro magnifications just to observe that uh, i am getting a uh, 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 60% of uh, acyclic ferrites in this 100% uh, microstructures i am getting 60% what is my aim to get the 100% acyclic ferrite but it is not obtaining it contains some micro ferrite it can contain so many uh, micro structures perlite may present martensite may present now just you observe that this is my second trial i have changed my current voltage and speed during that period this is my input one point this is larger what i am getting there 75% now this is increasing this is increasing larger than this and uh, just you observe that so this uh, uh, needle like structure i got needle like structure i got now just you observe in the third trial so a uh, third trial i have got the uh, more heat input but uh, again uh, this is the uh, lower this is uh, decreasing uh, circular ferrite and uh, what is my aim i am selecting i am selecting this is my uh, uh, this is because uh, this is my parameters because i get this, this is, these are the my parameters for my why i, I have selected this which is a very very desirable conditions for the selection of uh, rad because it contains highest acyclic ferrite uh, which gives the very very strong it, it has more ductility it has more tensile strength more hardness like that and it, but it is not brittle it, it has having ductile properties when uh, uh, after welding generally some welding uh, becomes uh, brittle uh, conditions but here because of acyclic ferrite so we have the very 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 high uh, uh, impact strength that is the toughness will increase and uh, ductility as well as toughness will increase because of this acyclic ferrite and that is my uh, minimum percentage of martensite we obtain so this is this is my third condition so acyclic ferrite is also obtained i have taken so this is a base metal structure i have taken the micro structure before welding uh, i have taken micro structure before welding in that welding i have observed perlite i have observed ferrite okay so uh, per, per, perlite and ferrite so if if uh, we are uh, we have more per ferrite it means more ductility uh, if it, it it contains much more perlite means it is gives the more strength like that so i have selected uh, uh, now it is a welded steel plate after welding after welding uh, what i got the plate that uh, material i have get So just you observe that I have the acyclic ferrite. This is acyclic ferrite structure. Here acyclic ferrite. This is acyclic ferrite. Uh, this is a carbon bound grain boundary ferrite. This is a grain boundary ferrite. This is a side plate ferrite. This uh, side plate. This side plate ferrites. This is a polygonal ferrite. This is a polygonal ferrite. This is polygonal ferrite. And maximum you observe that I have I have got the maximum patches of uh, acyclic ferrites and that gives the in welded joint. i got the acyclic ferrites therefore i have selected i have selected uh, this as my input for uh, getting the maximum acyclic ferrite that is 1 uh, 1.52 to 1.62 so uh, already i have explained uh, why 
we need the uh, shielding gas uh, for that because the nitrogen is very dangerous oxygen is dangerous for uh, welding so these elements should be avoided uh, um, if if that there is a chance of mixing nitrogen oxygen and hydrogen in the weld zone it creates a lot of uh, problems these uh, problems uh, may be uh, cracking porosity or uh, we are not getting any soundness uh, that is uh, now uh, particularly effect of nitrogen nitrogen is very dangerous uh, nitrogen is very dangerous particularly when it is available in the steel what will happen it increases strength but reduces reduce the toughness but uh, in marine uh, uh, engine uh, sorry marine uh, materials we require the more uh, toughness and hence uh, we are taking using the nitrogen we are not using nitrogen more shielding process now when using the austenitic austenitic or uh, austenitic stainless steels uh, uh, because of nitrogen what is the problem uh, ferrite will reduce but we require the more ferrite it uh, what is the problem with this nitrogen in the austenitic or duplex stainless steel a uh, solidification cracking takes place and it is a uh, uh, very very dangerous uh, cracking uh, it, it reduces the uh, strength and hence uh, what is the next is that uh, nitrogen is a uh, austenite uh, stabilizer Uh, for austenitic and duplex stainless steels so uh, this nitrogen is not converting available because we are heating uh, uh, this nitrogen so complete metal up to the uh, super uh, uh, super uh, heating materials that is called as super heating temperature that is called as super heating mat materials so very very high temperature than the melting point temperature uh, then when uh, the cooling rate will reduce this austenite will not convert to the aspirate aspirate and hence uh, 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 strength will not get so when we want to join titanium uh, when uh, we want to use titanium what is the problem it reduces the ductility because of this nitrogen now effect of oxygen so when we are using steel we are get, having this same problems uh, circular ferrite uh, is promoted uh, but it reduces the toughness aluminum it forms the oxide because of oxygen aluminum is very sensitive for uh, oxygen and uh, uh, these uh, oxides aluminum uh, al2o3 is uh, considered as inclusions and uh, this inclusion is very dangerous for welded joints titanium increases strength but reduces ductility these are the problems hydrogen in case of hydrogens in case of steel it is having hydrogen cracking in case of aluminum it, it forms the gas porosity and it reduces both strength and ductility now hence what is the problem already i have given uh, this co2 uh, co2 generally uh, not used in case of uh, 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 this uh, metal welding gas metal arc welding and because uh, it is for higher temperature it is converted to co and oxygen so these are the my samples uh, uh, for testing uh, i have taken this is for uh, uh, base metal this is for base metal this is for a welded joint so i have measured it i got a very this is uh, i have measured the hardness micro hardness at the joint um and uh, i got these results uh, uh, i have micro hardness testers weaker hardness i have measured uh, this is my impact uh, uh, specimens for measuring uh, welded joints now uh, i observed that uh, when we want uh, we have so many uh, progressive uh, way Uh, we can do the phd we can do mtech on this topic this topic is very hard uh, very very vast uh, many more we uh, then uh, you uh, many more uh, many more participants require wants phd on this topic they can do they can do the uh, uh, treatments now i have done uh, treatments for uh, from room temperature to the uh, cryogenic i have selected uh, 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 different different samples for Uh, different different temperatures uh, i have kept for different different times so uh, i observed that whatever may be the carbides available whatever may be the carbides available after welding so it can be converted into the acicular ferrite by uh, heat treatment process okay so after welding what is the chance what is the advanced technology to improve the mechanical properties that is called as a cryogenic heat treatment and when you keep that uh, welded uh, uh, material uh, in the cryogenic temperature that is minus 50 degree centigrade for some time what will happen so this uh, 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 lath martensite lath martensite is uh, obtained uh, 
uh, it contains sometimes uh, lot martensite percentage is available in the welded zone as well as a heat affected zone that can be converted into acicular ferrite by using the cryogenic heat treatment and hence uh, uh, we are getting the maximum uh, strength okay i will stop here thank you very much thank you for patience listening thank, thank you coordinator dr kiran bhore uh, thank you uh, thank you sir any uh, we will take some questions if there are any questions from the participants sir shall i ask one question to you sir uh, please go ahead sir ha uh, sudha guru ji sir uh, what is meant by white layer uh, uh, in microstructure in the welding process yes how, yes. This, how this white layer uh, microstructure it will be produced uh, during uh, welding uh, no the, during welding during solidification yeah yeah during during solidification, solidification. Uh, how this ha uh, so very very little amount of uh, generally it is produced uh, uh, majority of the uh, uh, microstructure available is acicular ferrite and uh, a little bit uh, ferrite okay so i have not counted the what is the amount exactly because i have concentrated only on uh, measurement of the acicular ferrites i a little hmm. bit uh, generally so it is a formation one of the formations i have not gone through the uh, very uh, different way on microstructure studies Uh, because uh, i have concentrated on the acicular ferrites measurements only i have the correlations with uh, heat input with acicular ferrites uh, uh, and uh, any other uh, uh, mechanical properties sir again my one question is uh, in the uh, mems when we are using the titanium uh, this blade and the uh, um, uh, here how what type of this uh, welding uh, joining process used in this uh, this micro electronic parts uh, um, in this titanium material when we are using this titanium material in the mms uh, component then what type of this uh, uh, welding no, I, have, huh. i have not done thoroughly that uh, titanium welding because uh, uh, i have done all the majority of the work on uh, cast iron and steels uh, my area is cast iron and steels i have not done uh, uh, this uh, titanium welding but i will i get the uh, if you have any problems on titanium i will search my uh, theory and i will go to it because it is very interesting titanium welding is a very advanced welding uh, yes 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 and uh, mems uh, component uh, what type of this uh, micro welding are used sir Micro welding is very very advanced welding. So I have not gone through that. Yeah, during in MEMS. So my